Some new bombshell information about the next Dragon Ball Budokai Tenkaichi game called Sparking Zero has just come out and it's pretty big. So this comes from a French journalist and of course it was written in French and then translated to English. Posted by Lon SSJ who gave thanks to Sophie and Lee Geek and Yaikai's who directly exchanged with the developer. The following translation I'm going to be reading comes straight from DB Sparking Zero on Twitter. That's not the official Dragon Ball Sparking Zero Twitter. That's just a fan who posts a lot about the game, so you can go ahead and give them follow. Anyway, I'm going to read the translations now. Bear with me. Jun Furutani takes the reins as producer of Sparking Zero, but remains under the supervision of Ryo Miyoto, producer of the Dragon Ball Budokai Tenkaichi series, who validates the directions and choices of the new Budokai Tenkaichi. The team is open to criticism and made up of enthusiasts, with Jun Furutani himself being a big fan. The local split-screen mode won't be available after all, not because of the developers, but because of problems with Sony and Microsoft, which complicate the split-screen adaptation. They are trying to find a solution, but for the time being, there will be no split-screen, perhaps due to Sony and Microsoft policies favoring the sale of more consoles. I think that part that says perhaps due to Sony and Microsoft policies favoring the sale of more consoles, that's probably like just some speculation on the part of the interviewer. I don't think that's probably a direct quote from the interview. Anyway, let's get back to the rest of the translation. He goes on to say, this wouldn't be the first time such a situation has arisen. The situation may yet evolve as the team is aware of the demand. The developers mentioned that adapting games for the Xbox Series S are particularly difficult. And this next bit will be big for GT fans. It says Dragon Ball GT characters will be included, perhaps in the base roster or as DLC. So they're not sure if they're going to put them in as base or DLC. Would you guys buy the DLC pack for GT characters? I know I would, but it still wouldn't be the best feeling in the world, but... It is what it is. The game will also include fusions, which is Go Gogeta, Vegito, and Gotenks, for example. I felt like that was probably obvious, but it's nice to get confirmation here. There is no precise release date at the moment. The team is working on the game and wants to avoid rushing to release an incomplete game. They're taking their time, envisioning a release in late 2024 or 2025. A full story mode will be present following and evolving from G Tenkaichi 3, which is pretty good. I did like the Tenkaichi 3 story mode. I think that if you want a good comprehensive story mode, you can play Dragon Ball Z Kakarot of like a full story mode. But as far as just like the main fights and, and stuff goes, that's pretty nice. And I can't wait to see how they evolve from Tenkaichi 3 and cover stuff like Super. Graphics have been improved over trailers already seen. The even better graphics team has answered criticisms about the look of the hair, for example. The outfits will be able to deteriorate during battles, and the fights are designed to be longer than the old ones. Rio Mido remains the project's main decision maker. The game's cover art is already ready and features the style of the old designs, potentially those by Nakatsuru. Several other trailers will be released over the coming months. It's presenting something new, which makes sense. Characters from the Dragon Ball movies will be included up to and including Gohan Beast, probably. No word yet on what Dragon Ball movies. It says characters from the Dragon Ball movies will be included. Possibly, like, just talking about the Super movies from the Dragon Ball Z movies. Who knows? A special effort is being put into the backgrounds for better immersion, as the human eye is more receptive to immersion thanks to the backgrounds. The team is very attentive to the community on Twitter and by email to improve the game thanks to reviews. Rio Mito himself has asked for feedback from all over the world. Constructive criticism is particularly appreciated. Anyways guys, that was the full interview. Let's hope that a lot of this information or all of it is accurate. I'm a little worried because there's no video to go along with it. It's all just like written stuff, but you know, written interviews have happened before. I guess my only main concern is that something might have been lost in translation, but from what I understand, this information seems to be accurate, so I figured I would report on it here today. Anyways guys, that does it for this video. Make sure you like the video, comment down below, and please subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all things Dragon Ball news and commentary. I do try to cover all the latest and greatest in Dragon Ball news, and I also do gameplay and reviews as well. Currently, I'm reviewing Super Dragon Ball Heroes Dark Demon Realm Mission. I'm having fun doing that on the channel. And whenever I do those reviews and stuff like that, I don't just cover the whole comic with like all the pages and stuff. I just, I just, I just use like maybe six pages that I think are the coolest or five pages or something to give a good idea of what I read during the chapter. And they're also kind of recaps as well. So if you've never read those, you could watch those for a little bit of a recap, I guess. Anyways, guys, that does it for this video and I will see you in the next one. Peace off.